I recently discussed the top 10 roller coasters in the state of Ohio. I knew my list was going to be controversial, but what I wasn't expecting to see was the amount of hate that was garnished toward Orion. I know it's not a record-breaking giga coaster that everyone was hoping for, but what we got is a solid attraction that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any other giga coaster. On the other hand, I wasn't surprised with the amount of love Millennium Force received. I know the nostalgia factor is strong with this one, but this Giga Coaster isn't without flaws. I thought it would be appropriate to have these giant roller coasters duel it out and find out once and for all which coaster is best. Because whatever I conclude in this video is ultimate deciding factor, of course. Before we get to our duel, I want to remind you about my Insta and TikTok accounts. I post content over there on a regular basis, all for your enjoyment, so go check it out. Like my other coaster duels, first let's talk about the ride's stats. As we can see here, Millennium Force snags the lead in height, speed, and track length. Orion ties Millennium Force in the drop category, both featuring a 300-foot drop. Orion does beat out Millennium Force with a steeper first drop at 85 degrees, versus Millennium Force's 80-degree drop. I award a half point for each stat, so Millennium Force will earn a total of two points. I'm giving both Orion and Millennium Force a half point for the drop category, and Orion will end up with one point. The Lift When Millennium Force debuted in 2000, the cable lift was something new and exciting. No more loud clacking sound of the rollback, just a smooth, quiet and fast ride to the top of the hill. The cable lift will pull the train at a 45 degree angle, reaching a max speed of 15 miles per hour. As for Orion, I was unable to obtain any additional data for the lift other than it's a more traditional chain lift, but it does pull the train at a faster speed than the average chain lift, but the lift angle is nowhere near that of Millennium Force. MF gets this point. The View At the top of the first drop, Orion gives you a nice view of the wooded area surrounding the park and the residential neighborhood beyond the park property. Unlike at Cedar Point, where there are multiple structures over 200 feet, Orion feels more exposed, thus making the first lift hill feel much higher than 287 feet. Millennium Force gives you a stunning view of Lake Erie and the entire park. The top of Millennium Force has one of the best views in the park. This is a no contest, earning MF another point. First Drop It may be only 5 degrees steeper, but Orion has the better first drop. Regardless of where you are seated, riders will be treated to some decent airtime. If you are looking for some stronger airtime, head to the back of the train, that's where the real action is. Millennium Force, while it does have some airtime, it's only really experienced in the back of the train. And nowhere as powerful like the airtime on Orion. I think this category should go to Orion. Ride Intensity This will be a debated category, but I'm leaning in the direction of Orion. When I ride at Millennium Force, the most intense part of the ride is at the bottom of the first drop. I practically gray out during that spot every ride. After that first moment, the rest of the ride never threatens me with gray outs. Majority of the elements are drawn out, which will produce lesser g-forces. Orion has two moments where I could gray out, at the bottom of the first hill, and the 125 foot spiral. Because it has two strong moments, I feel that it outdoes the overall intensity of Millennium Force, earning this point. Airtime this is a no-brainer. Orion has more airtime than Millennium Force, hands down. First, we have the main drop. It's probably the best moment of airtime. The wave turn produces some floater, but mostly laterals. The same can be said about the turnaround. The speed hill and giant airtime hill are two great moments of airtime. And finally, the banked airtime hill prior to the brake run can produce some nice ejector for those seated in the back rows. Riders in the front of the train will be treated to a surprise pop of air as you fly into the brakes. Millennium Force, you have the first drop, but it doesn't match the intensity of Orion. After that, you may or may not get airtime on the giant airtime hill and the second airtime hill, but you will experience a quick pop of airtime during the speed hill prior to the final overbank turn. Layout 
When I take a look at the layout of both coasters, I think Orion has more going on. It is a shorter ride, but it packs in more variety. We have a wave turn, a giant turnaround, speed hill, airtime hill, spiral, banked airtime hill. Millennium Force is basically overbanked turns. There is, of course, the three airtime hills, but the rest of the ride is just copy and paste. Not to say that it's a bad thing, it's all about speed, which we'll discuss in the next category, but layout is going to go to Orion. Pacing. Orion may have the better layout, but Millennium Force has the better pacing. According to the data I obtained from Airtime Thrills, he does the great series called By the Numbers. Anyways, he calculated that Millennium Force travels about 87 feet per second, and Orion 82 feet per second. Millennium Force has more focus on speed, which is why it stays lower to the ground during the second part of the ride, flying into the giant overbank turns. Orion seems to have larger elements, with the only real moment about speed being that speed hill after the turnaround. Theming. For this category, I decided to take all aspects of the ride. The color scheme, station design, lighting package, trains, soundtrack, and all additional theming in the queue. This was a tough one to decide, but in the end, I went with Orion. Both Millennium Force and Orion have a musical theme of sorts, but Orion is more epic and well-produced. The lighting package on Millennium Force is neat and can be changed dependent of the season, but I just love the blue lights and LED strip that runs up the side of the lift on Orion. Millennium Force has no theming for the queue, while Orion has a nicely themed pre-station building. Millennium Force has a better logo and train design. I know that some will compare Orion's logo and train color scheme to Too Faced because, I mean, come on, it does kind of look like that. Again, this category is really close, but I'm edging this one over to Orion. Restraints. I know Millennium Force has its fans when it comes to the seating and restraints, but to me there is nothing better than the clamshell designs that we have with the B&M Hyper models. The two across seating on Millennium Force may have you feeling more exposed, but with ample legroom and accommodating clamshell straps trumps anything that Intamin did with Millennium Force. Even the secondary seatbelt is more comfortable on Orion, making it an easy winner for this category. So, out of the 10 categories, the final tally comes to Millennium Force with 5 points and Orion with 7 points, making it the winner of today's duel. I know that these two roller coasters have their fans, devoted fans when it comes to Millennium Force, but when we break it down, I think it's clear that Orion as a whole is a better attraction. If you prefer the high speeds over the additional airtime you get on Orion, then Millennium Force will be your pick. But I just love the variety, airtime, and theming that Orion has. However, you just can't beat that view on Millennium Force. Well, that's going to do it for today's duel. I'm sure my reasoning has angered some devoted fans of Millennium Force, but I'm eager to hear your opinion down in the comments. If you enjoyed today's video, please click on the like button and subscribe. That way you continue to get great content brought to you by X-Cream Thrills.